Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. It's Saturday, so it's the update video day. I get to see a lot of cool stuff and explain some of the things. But before I do that, I want to tell you, I am almost out of ideas for what to teach you guys on my Monday video. So usually, as you guys know, Wednesday, I usually do a cylinder head review video. And then, you know, Saturdays, like today, I do an update. It could be a bunch of different random things. But usually Sunday or Monday's video is strictly technical and it's something to teach you something or show you something from a dyno stuff. Well, the dyno engine is getting really close, which I'm going to show you in this video. But I want to get your idea. So is there something you would like to learn about or something you wish you knew about that maybe I could explain to you on the video on Monday? So since I know you guys watch these videos, you are my diehard. You are my tried and true guys. So, if there's something you would like to know about, and maybe I can do what I can to show you or whatever, I will make that a video for Monday, hopefully, if time permits. So, if not, you're just going to get another cylinder head review video because I got plenty of those. So, got ideas, put them in the comments like, I would like to learn about X, or can you explain about this? Anyway, now to these. A couple of weeks ago, I said I'm selling some of the heads that I have here that just aren't. I don't have time to mess with them. These were one of them. And somebody's like, could you show us? These are small block Chevy heads, by the way. These are pro top line heads. These are their 14 degrees. These things make a lot of power. There was one of my customers who had these on a nitrous deal and he was flying. So I ported them and stuff, but fast. Anyway, these I got from Ron's porting service before he went out of business. It, well, as he was closing out his stuff, one head has some CNC work done, but it's like the first op. So probably he just did a random pass and get ready before it finishes out. This one has zero port work done besides the chambers are almost there. So they're gonna need to probably, if I was to do it and I don't, I guess I don't mind doing this, but if you want me to finish out these heads, so if you bought them just as is, I'm gonna sell them for 800 bucks. Gone out the door, just like you see, no seats, no guides out the door. It's probably gonna take about three grand to finish the heads just to get them bare ready to go which would mean the seats installed the guides installed this one seats and guides installed both of them fully ported and then it'd be good you're still gonna have to have valve train stuff so you can see it's kind of expensive but if you've already got some of those pieces great this head is capable of flowing over 400 cfm so they're they're really nice heads i don't have a clue what this one be but anyway 800 bucks you're more than welcome to them these were the ls Seven heads, GM ones, which I'm surprised I haven't gotten rid of yet. Um, they will not fit on a six liter block. They have to be on a 4155 or 4125 bore or bigger. They won't go on a six liter. This one, I have the new seat installed. I haven't cut the valve job. This guy had sent him in and he's like, just keep them. But anyway, this one I just cartridge rolled. That's all I did because they're CNC ported from the factory. I do need to redo this valve job, but as they are, as you see them without any work, 800 bucks. If you want to redo the valve job, a thousand and for that thousand i'll show i'll include some of the valves i've got some stainless steel valves from from Ferreira that are hollow stems i think i've got seven intake and seven exhaust i don't know what happened the other one too but for a thousand bucks you'll get the uh um, the valves and the heads if you want them just like they are 800 bucks gone i just need them gone because they're in my way i got too much crap out here and i don't know that i'll ever get to this so this seemed like a really cool project that just never came to be now let's talk about the 540 this is the 540. Look how close it is to being done. Gary Dunsworth at Dunsworth Machine Shop sent me this photo. It's, it's getting close. So I would say we're getting, probably in February, the dyno stuff will happen for the 540. He obviously has to check piston and valve clearance. He just got the heads kind of sitting on there. Before someone says, oh my God, look at the rust. Uh, the block was cleaned and if you take it out, sometimes it just happens. Am I worried? Not at all. So anyway. Yeah, it's getting close, and that should be some pretty, pretty cool content. However, you know what made the small block Chevy so great? It was viewers sent in different intakes to try. So if you got like a big block intake, you might want to see what happened when it compared to the other stuff. Just hit me up, and maybe we could test at the same time. Anyway, there you go. Something else that came in cool today or this week in the shop was these. You won't know what these are. These are also a small block Chevy head, but if you look at the back, these are small uh, SB2 heads and these were used in NASCAR. So this guy, he said, the guy he got them from said they're Richard Childer Racing. Well, Richard Childer um, competed in many forms of the NASCAR racing. These might've come off the truck series. I don't know that they came off the, you know, the Winston Cup or the higher level. I don't know what they call it now. These might've even been the Bush series heads, but I did flow it. So all he asked me to do is flow it and see what you think. And I'm thinking this is pretty good. 
So does it have as much peak flow as some of the other heads? No, there's some heads that flow way more than this. However, the low lift flow is great and the port size is small. Speaking of which, NASCAR heads, these are a very old set of NASCAR heads. These are Pontiac 867 heads. These were used in like the early 90s, late 80s. I'm gonna do a whole video on this and on this, but I thought I'd show you because they're pretty cool. Yes, this is a small block Chevy head. Uh, here's what I remember most about this head right here. I remember because Hot Rod Magazine used to be cool. And one of the things that it had in it was this head. And it said, the head NASCAR outlawed. And I was like, whoa. And it had all this stuff. And it's, as you can tell, look at the valve rotation on it compared to, this is actually a 21 degree head, by the way, not 23. <laughs> See those, those are marks for the, where the epoxy is. But anyway, these are 21 degrees and they're wedged, they're in line. The SB2s rotated it. But anyway, I'm gonna do a video for each one of those. It should be kind of neat. Uh, but that came in and it was pretty cool. But let's look at some other stuff. I just finished this project. Now this is a head that I sent off to get digitized to be CNC ported. If you haven't watched my channel, I've already sent off one anyway, uh, actually two versions to get CNC ported. This is another one. This one is a Dragon Slayer. It won't require a, a shaft rocker, but obviously you can run one on it but it has a 2.73 cross-sectional area with just using stud mounts. The thing flows like 337, but it flows almost 270 at four. This thing's a beast. But anyway, this is a 4060 spacing, so it's not standard, standard valve spacing, hence the reason why it is what it is. But that got sent off this week to get digitized and ported. My goal is to have in stock at all times, one standard port doesn't require uh, put shaft rockers, uh, set in stock, a 4061 like this in, and then also one that does require shaft rockers for the standard valve spacing. This way, um, customers could get their stuff really quickly. Obviously, I'd keep them here, but all I'd have to do is valve job them and assemble them so people, they'd be ready to go. But anyway, pretty neat. Well, if you've known anything about me, that just let you know. So if you're like, I only care about cars, you can just stop. The rest of this is just going to be me. But I want to add something special. Usually at this point, I'm going to talk about my son swimming, which of course I am because I'm proud of him. But I thought I would add a public service announcement because I feel like I, I need to help my viewers to prevent them from doing something ridiculous. So a little public service announcement, you know. So here's it is. If you have Paramount Plus and you happen to see the show called The Curse, you want to avoid it. It's going to look, the trailer looks amazing. You're like, maybe I should give this show a shot. This seems like a good idea. Some kid curses this guy. What could happen, right? The show is a piece of crap. I wasted 10 hours of my life. I'll never get back. By the way, as I'm looking at this, yeah, this ear sticks out. I think it's kind of my mom pulling my ear so much when I was younger. But anyway, back to the show. It's horrible. A spoiler alert. I'm going to go ahead and tell you the whole thing. It sounds like it's going to be cool because you got... Um, some kid that puts a curse on a dude. So you're like, oh, this is going to be really neat. No, it's mostly cringeworthy. And here's the other thing. When did this start happening where they have no problem showing the man's privates? You know, I don't remember a time when I was younger where you could even see the women's privates. You might see, you know, um, the, the, this area. But it was rare if you ever saw that. And usually what you saw was just hair. Let's face it, just hair. Now, they'd have no problem showing the man area. I don't, it didn't even have anything to do with the show. I only point that out because I'm like, man, this is getting ridiculous. Well, besides that, the show is a piece of crap. Because I'm like, here's your spoiler, here's how it ends. The man wakes up and he's on the ceiling, like up there. I was like, wow, he must have slept really well, though. Pretty comfy. And then what's happened is, I guess they've not explained this at all in the other nine hours of the show, that somehow he's cursed that he flies up into the sky. No way did they even explain how that happened. Nine hours of show, never at all. He's flying up there. Well, his wife tries to get him down from the ceiling. She happens to be pregnant, by the way. And they can't get him down, so they have the idea it must be the house. So let's pull him outside the house and everything will be fine. Well, no, he flies up into a tree. And then what happens is they, the fire department's calling like, man, you're going to jump. He's like, if I let go, I will fly up into space on other ways down. And so they cut the branch and he flies up into space and he dies. That's how the show ends. What did it have to do with any of the other? Nothing. You lazy writers. Uh, 10 hours, you could have built up something else, and that's what you did? What'd you do, call in sick that day? Anyway, I know it sounds like I'm fired up, because on half the shows I watch now, I'm like, I really feel like you either fired the writer, like, at episode six, or you're like, milk it. Look, milk it, sir. 
Make it happen. Just add crap. But it's not how, make it happen. Anyway, public service announcement, don't watch The Curse. Just on Paramount Plus. It's actually on Showtime, but just pass. You're like, because my wife literally said to me, this looks bad. This doesn't look too bad. It's got that, that girl from Cruella DeVille, that, that girl from Spider-Man. She's in everything she does. She's great. I think it's Emma, I don't know what her name is. Emma Watson, maybe. I don't know. Someone, you can put it in the comments. I don't remember. She's also at, I also was like, babe, no, she's not. She was in La La Land, and that's a musical that sucked, and I don't watch musicals, so not everything she's in. She's amazing on Thousand One Dalmatians. Like, I don't care. And the show was horrible. Horrible. Anyway, to my son. So you got three minutes of that, your public service announcement. You're welcome. To my son, swimming. So yesterday, Rowdy Gaines, the Olympic swimmer, was supposed to be in town at Bixby, so he's going to be like, hey, guys, uh, you know, doing motivational speech. For whatever reason, he had to reschedule, which I totally understand. So I emailed him to like, let him know how uh, Bishop had improved because he actually wanted to know, which was great. And um, anyway, so it got, got rescheduled. So I don't mention it in the last video. It didn't happen. But here's what happened. So if you watched last week, you'll know that I was recording this and we were getting ready to go to Bartlesville for his what they call the meet of champions. And you have to be good to get there. So you have to make a qualifying time to actually compete. And he did. So he competed in like six events, but I'm just going to highlight a few of them. Um, the one he did the best in was the 200 free. Now, if you watched last week's video, you'll know that on Tuesday, he just did a 159.44. So he finally broke the two minute mark. It had taken him almost a year and a half. And he kept, even though he was training harder and doing more training, he just couldn't get underneath it. And then all of a sudden just snapped and he went there. Three days later, he competes at the meet of champions in Bartlesville and goes 158.22. He knocked off 1.2 seconds in three days. Three days. It took him almost six months to do the same, knock off the same amount of time. So it's weird how things sometimes just click and all of a sudden you're faster. But he was fast. Not only that, I'm going to include this clip, his clip of that one. It's got no sound in it. So enjoy it right at the end. You'll see him. He's in like lane three. He runs down the boy to win the heat. Now, he only finished 18th overall. But that's how you stay with it. And that's amazing. I mean, it was a great, it was wonderful to be there. He also picked up, he improved in everything. Um, except for one thing, and I, I think it was his 100 butterfly, and I, I know exactly what happened. Hit the, the, uh, the board that he steps off of when they go to, I guess, jump into the pool, it, it's messed up. So when he jumped off, it actually pushed the, the board all the way back, so he didn't really get a good push off. So I think he was worse by like three hundredths of a second from his best personal best. But all the rest, he improved his times, all of them. So his PBs kept getting dropped, and he was doing great. So it was a wonderful event for that. He was really hoping to maybe make the finals, but you had to be the top 10 to make the finals. I think he finished 14th, and I think it was in breaststroke, actually, which is not his best thing. So, um, yeah, he was really, really doing good. So definitely knocking off times. Now, he doesn't have another meet until Tuesday, and that's a senior thing, and that's in, actually at big speed. They'll be beating there. And then the big one, this is the big one, so you won't hear me talk about him probably too much, is going to be February 3rd. That's regionals. That's where they have this entire area of the state will be at Jinx to compete. And at the same time, over in Oklahoma City and Edmond, that side of the state will be competing. And the top 24 times of all of those that are going on at the same time get to go to state. And he made it last year, individual in the 200 meter. I believe he's trying for that one again. I think he's his time's looking good. Like He might even make the top 16, but you never know how fast other people are either. He just keeps working. He keeps swimming hard. He's doing that. But that's that. His um, relay is looking really solid, too, that he's with for Broken Arrow High School. So great there. So big thanks to his coaches, Lynn Gorman at Swim Tulsa and also Coach Barker, both of them, husband and wife at BA. So anyway, here's the video of his swim. Guys, remember, I don't pour cast iron. Here's something else since I know you're watching at the end. This happened twice this week, so I got to tell you this because you're going to think I'm a, I'm a dick, and I am a dick. Um, but, um, I gotta tell you this. So I keep saying at the end of every video, I don't pour cast iron heads and I'm no Superman. Um, this week, twice, this is twice. I had people email me and I'm like, Hey, um, I watch all your videos. I'm a huge follower of yours. Can you port some, um, cast iron heads for me? And my instant thought was, you mean you watch all my videos because I swear at the end. So I've started doing this and I know it's a, you're gonna be like, you're a dick, you're a dick. I'm not, I'm unsubscribing right now, maybe. So I thought, you know what? I guess got to find a way. So what I did is I go, yeah, yeah, I'll port that. 
Uh, it's going to cost $10,500, and it's going to take a year and a half. Nothing gets people to stop asking me questions about porting cast iron, I think, than telling them that. Instead of saying, I don't port cast iron. Because you might say, why don't you just, why were you so mad? Why don't you just tell them, I don't port cast iron heads? Because when you do, it goes to this. Oh, man, that's too bad. You sure you won't do it? You sure? Do you know anybody else that will? But when you say it's 10500 silence. I know, I'm, I'm mean. But I'm, I was hoping also that they'll spread it. So he was like, he was going to charge me $10,500 to port these cast iron heads. And I'm sure someone's going to be like, you know he doesn't port them, right? But anyway, watch the end of this. This is my son swimming. Hopefully you enjoy. Guys, thanks so much for being subscribers. And I appreciate all of you that stuck around because I know these videos suck. Because I wouldn't even watch my own videos. Well, maybe some. I'd watch the dino stuff. I probably would do that one because I want to learn more stuff. But anyway, thanks, guys. Buy some stuff from my online store. It helps with these whole projects. Because I'm hoping if I get enough money, I could actually do a, uh, a Ford. I want to do like a 427 or 408 probably. This way it'll be the same size for the LS, small block Chevy, and the Ford. I want that to be have enough money saved up so maybe by October I can get that project going. That'd be cool, too. Ford dino mule, LS dino mule, big block dino mule. It's cool. But anyway, guys, check this out. And remember, take care. I don't forecast iron, and I'm no Superman.